cloud meeting. And... Recording is on. Okay, recording is on. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So we're talking about enterprise on a D3D, 3D printer. Uh, tell me yeah. the scene. Um, I haven't really looked in detail into your proposal, but but I, I should take a look at that. I meant to do it, but we're, I mean, we're we're pretty much yeah. in crunch time here. It's we're building the next iteration of the Seed Eco Home, so we're really busy on that on the ground, and it's like freezing mm -hmm. out there, so we're kind of fighting the weather. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah. Um, but the the relevance for, from the standpoint of the Seed Eco Home, the relevance of the three D printers, we do want to do the larger scale printers for construction materials, panel materials. Okay like foundation forms, trim, plastic lumber. I mean, starting from from waste plastic. So that's mm -hmm. that's another site to develop. And we're going to push that forward quite a bit as we launch the Seed Home project. Um, we're looking at an on-site event here that's going to be in September where we build more of them and train people to build them and stuff like that. So we definitely um, want to see the printer used for better things. but. But the the missing link right now, we want to be making our filament from waste, and that's it's doable. But no one really developed that in open source yet, so that's that's just in the roadmap of uh, as we go forward. Yeah, um, that's that's um, developing the uh, what is it the 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 filament maker. Yes, yes, okay. including shredding. So part of that is shredding. So industrial grade shredders that you can throw all kinds of plastic like pvc everything abs and then get the filament and i think it's somewhat of low-hanging fruit but the thing that's missing also is a high temperature print chamber which i also think we can do relatively easily i don't know if you've uh, taken a look at uh the wiki mm, for what's okay. on there but yeah i think i think that's quite doable too but i think the two missing like that I think is the enabler for working with any kind of crappy plastic filament. So that's that's an agenda, and that's to be deployed if we, um, as we go forward with a seed home. Part of that is to develop the the 3D printer infrastructure for larger larger prints. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then just just the regular 3D printers. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, no, I just want to ask uh, how big the print are, we, uh, are you thinking about? I want, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about four by eight feet build volume. Four, four by eight feet. Well, like one by big. two meters. Yeah, it's big. Oh. Yeah. I mean, literally thinking about, because this house that I'm in right now, it's made of, the walls are made of panels that are four by eight feet. Uh, basically printing that scale of a wall module with, with all the utilities built into it. Uh, so that would be, I think, a game changer. The thing is there's a abundant waste plastic and it's polluting okay. the environment. So I think yeah. there's an opportunity there. And precious plastic, you, you heard of those people, right? Pre They're, uh, precious plastic. No, I haven't. Okay, precious plastic is a waste re recycling project for plastic as well, but they don't have a 3D printer. They have other, other uh, technologies for that. Yep okay yeah anyway okay um but yeah i i i i am quite interested in that because um just here in indonesia there's a lot of plastic waste here um yeah yeah so so that would be i think that's a good area to i, I would like to go into that as well to be able yeah. to use um waste plastic tell me more yeah and that's an abundant global resource i think um Tell me more about, so we you, we chit chatted about the distributive enterprise aspects. I mean, what's, so do you get that, st all that stuff? I mean, how, how do you get it? Because because very few people really understand it. I want to find out more from you, like how you got into an appreciation of that or if you are on the same page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you mean, do you, uh, you mean about... Uh, uh, Working open, collabor collaborating on an enterprise that's open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hadn't really gotten into that. I mean, I was more, when I first um, heard of uh, OSE, I was more interested in like the, the sustainable um, technologies. Um, first of all, with the, C, with the CB press, 
Yeah, because yeah. that was that was the first thing that I came across, as well as the um, uh, what was it, the power cube, and then the tractor, and those no. those like interested me because uh, I'd like to do that. But um, the idea of distributive enterprise, in other words, being open, op collaborating openly with other people, I think that does appeal to me, and I think um, it's a good thing. Uh, so basically, we're not competing or hiding our technology, but we're more competing on uh, on, a, on different front on price, uh, customer service, uh, quality of products, uh, competing on that, but not on the proprietary um, uh, technologies or the proprietary side. And yeah, I I I, uh, I mean I I do. I, I do appreciate that, and I think it appeals to me as well. Yeah. And I don't say compete on those things. I mean, also collaborate on elements that you mentioned too. So we oh. all develop uh, techniques, including whatever it's delivery, customer service. Uh, do that col mm. I mean, collaboratively, as in we're open and, and sharing our techniques of how we do that so everybody moves forward mm. and mm. we get beyond the artificial scarcity. So, yeah, I mean, the whole world is today is based really not on not sharing that's just a dynamic it's just not sustainable for the long term mm. of the, the planet so that's why i mean we're committed to that just you know as we go mm. forward but yeah 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 i mean so let's let's go um as far as uh, so as far as the printer um where are you at are you um, did you get it going or how can i help you on that uh, Sort of got it going. Um, this is this is one of my <laughs> first prints. Okay, so it's bad extraction rate. So that to me sounds like miss said from uh, like you you have to have one point seven five versus three millimeter filament correct. So do you have yeah. the correct printer profile to begin with? Um, yes, I think I have that. I've, I've printed this out. Um, so I'm trying to work through this, and I'm using Cura as a slicing. Yes. Uh, yeah. And but uh, some of the settings just uh, I, I'm not sure how. For instance, uh, before uh, because I was using I was using um, the Linux two uh, software, and uh, in their Cura the bed temperature appeared there. But now I switched over to OS uh, because because of the you know the the meeting. Uh, Thing. Um, the, now, when I look at the um, the profile in Cura, I can't find the bed temperature, so I have to set that manually myself. Um, I, can I just show you? I, yeah. I, I've been trying to actually. Record, um, well, maybe show me your screen. Share share your printing. screen for what you're doing, or show me how. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, sorry, just one moment. Uh, if I can just show you a clip. Because yeah. now it seems like, uh, I think the two things, the two main things that I'm having a problem with is the actual height of the nozzle from the bed. Uh, how, um, I'm not sure, do you just set that by eye or? Um, because uh, w what I've seen in other videos, you know, on printing is that where they where they use a piece of paper to set the distance between, you know, the bed and the nozzle. It's so, okay. Uh, so let me explain the case, concept. Yeah. I'll explain the concept. So, yeah. um, have you first of all have you seen in the instructions the tune and baby stepping correction? Yes, uh, I have seen. Um, so once, yes. so, it, so does the printer probe for you? It probes in four places when it starts. Is that correct? Say again, say again, please. When you start a print, it probes mm. in four places. Is that correct? It goes through the G29, um, which is. Uh, sorry, which it goes through which? The... the bed leveling procedure, which means that it touches yes. the surface four times. Okay, yes, um, I mean, that I have to set myself. I have to select under prepare and then go to bed leveling. Uh, no, or no. Level. no, upon print. Upon print. 
No, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it on its okay. own. Okay, that needs to happen on its own. Um, what you're probably what's probably happening is that did you ever open up the profile printer profile within Cura? Uh, yes. Uh, if I can, sorry. Yes, if you I need to can... import the profile. Can I share my screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. So what I have here in uh, Cura. Yeah, this is Cura. Oh, uh, my no, camera is gone off. You're on Mac. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I have this um, course course profile. And that's the one that I've been working through, trying to work no, no, through. No, to, no, I don't uh, mean that. Yeah. Printer profile is the .ini file. OK. That's the the uh, the one that's uh, like a text. text. Yes. You uh, have to import that. How do you import that? Uh, take a look at this file. OK. Uh, Sorry, where am I? Where this actually, someone else just did this. So, uh, can you see the chat box? Can I see the chat box? Go into the chat, which is on the left-hand side. Uh, uh, chat box. Okay. Yeah. I see the chat box. Click on it. Is my is my camera off? My camera has gone off. Uh, you're oh, still sharing my the screen to me. Oh. Okay. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. I see. I see the um, the chat. Okay. That's yeah. This is done for for, uh, for Mac. Okay. Download the initialization file. Adding profile. Okay. Uh, profiles activate. Okay. I see that. Adding custom printer. Add printer, custom, OK, D3D, changing print, manage printers. All right. Oh, OK. That's 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 helpful. Yeah, uh, I was I didn't know about this. Me either. It was just created a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah. Um, right. Uh, okay. So I could, tr yeah. So I could do that. So then that's everything goes in automatically, and I don't have to actually set anything manually. Um, right. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about was, um, uh, shall I stop sharing my screen? Uh, yeah, whichever. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to uh, stop sharing. The other thing I wanted to ask about was um, the actual setting for the Z probe. Is there a, is there a, 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 um, a distance from the end of the probe to the to the bed that we set it, or how does that work? Right. Um, so what happens when you have the printer profile done properly? The then when you slice a file and run the file to, for printing, it'll do bed probing. And once it starts printing, go into tune baby stepping correction. And you turn okay. the knob yeah. until it hits it's at the right level. Forget about the paper, whatever, this or that. You'll see it by eye that it's actually touching the bed. Uh, what so, is touching the bed, the nozzle or the, the filament? Nozzle. The, well, all the filament. It's it's going to be the nozzle has to be above the bed slightly, but so, you'll okay. see it when once it goes to the right distance, you'll see the layers uh, get cleanly attached to the build plate. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so don't have to worry about the the Z probe. Um, and then um, in the in the write up, it says that. Once you've set, once you've done the baby stepping and you've got a value for the uh, Z offset, then you should go to uh, control motion and save settings. Now, Correct. when I go when I go to control motion, there's no selection for save settings. 
I don't know if that's um, maybe the, well, the version. Let me see. Um, let me boot up my printer, plug in my printer here. I've got a universal here. Let me see what it shows there. Uh, okay, when I go on the... So here's... Um, here's this... If I click control, uh -huh. store memory, it says store memory. Sorry? It says store memory. Store oh, memory. Uh, on... So I, I'm going to correct that right now in a, in a guide. I know that was done kind of uh, quickly there. So go to click, control, motion. store memory. But but first you have to go to motion and click yeah. motion and Z offset and then, then store memory because it will not retain that in memory. Um, there is no... <laughs> store memory. I mean, I can see control Z offset. Uh, click that Z offset, but there's no actually uh, no store memory. Ah, uh, control. But then, um, oh, yeah, actually, okay, okay. Control store memory goes. Store memory is what it says. So I just corrected that in a guide. If you're looking at the guide. Oh, um, okay. Store memory. Yes, I see. Store control memory. store memory. But first, you have to yeah. know. First, you have to input that correct Z offset by adjusting it. Yeah. So, for example, okay. if you had, if you baby step down like to negative two millimeters, and your hmm. Z offset was negative one, then you add negative one to negative two. So it's going to be negative three total, and then save negative three. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Okay. That's looking I, I so see. beautiful. And uh, one, yeah. Just a comment is I can't believe you built it so fast. That's really good, but it does show that one with mechanical skills can readily put this together because some people just can just do not understand the concepts of how things work and they just cannot they just don't know how to put it together so that's good you you're a proof of the concept that someone with generic uh technical just just physical intuitiveness you can very easily put it together yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay that's good All right. uh let's see um Okay. So does the concept make sense? So the, the idea is you, you touch down to where it should be for printing properly. Mm -hmm. Then you need to save that. And you go into control, store memory. Okay. And okay. save that. And it will it will kind of lock up for a few seconds and as it's storing and then go back to the other screen. Okay. Save memory. Yeah, okay. after you have um, save memory, it'll, it'll like lock lock up. It won't be doing anything for a few seconds as it's saving. Okay. Yep. Uh, sometimes you know the you know if 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 if, if the um, the printer has been idle for a while with the bed in the up position, sometimes it just it sort of drops. That's it, a set. It, 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 you can yeah. re you can set that differently. You would have to go. Um, it would be under configuration H. Let's see. So I'm googling configuration. Do you know the structure of Marlin? Uh, so no, it's in not really. Marlin. So, so configuration dot H. This a um. Disable motor turn off you'd have to change the how to keep the steppers from disabling after print is complete so to do that 
Uh, here, let me show you this. And let's read this. So take a look at this link. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in configuration dot underscore advanced dot h. Uh, did you ever do any coding or programming? Are you familiar with any? Okay. No. Really but you not. were able to upload successfully using using Marlin for software, right? Sorry, not the Mar the Arduino environment. You opened that up and. Um, uh, you you mean uh, onto the controller? Yeah. Everything was already installed. I didn't install anything. Oh, you did. Oh, you didn't do that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, there's um. For that part, that should be in a manual. Let's see. Does it show about how to install software? Use Marlin. Make the. Yeah, it does show that on page twenty-eight of the D3D Pro V twenty point oh seven. Um. Yeah, if you install Arduino environment, okay, you didn't have to do that. But if you do, you'll see the the part of the program which is configuration underscore advanced dot h. Uh, you'll okay. see it, and then you change what it says to change in there. Um, do you want to try that, or do you want you should? Uh, I mean, if you, I mean, you you should you should uh, if you're gonna be dealing with this printer this is kind of basics of how you install the soft the firmware and in it basically the program it's written in essentially c c language so it's got like dot h file names um mm -hmm. arduino environment is essentially the c language you don't have to understand so much c language as much as there's things you comment and uncomment within the code to activate certain things with that basic level you can make various types of changes like for example these motors that want to stay on uh, so that's something you do want to learn as a technician of this printer um, okay uh, it's it's pretty basic it's it's basically the making changes within the code and it's there's a lot of videos online like how do you do something within Marlin, you know? Okay. Just about anything. And and you know, it is a little like okay, part of the thing of okay, collaborative literacy here, which you know, we're collaborating. Part of it is that Marlin is not completely documented, right? It's an open source project and there's not the Uber super manual and it's a code that evolves with time and there's always documentation lagging behind reality mm -hmm. that's kind of sounds like the osc printer why because <laughs> we i mean we constantly improve it right we're changing like yeah. we had a complete okay. super complete manual like a year ago or two years ago but then we went to this mm -hmm. new iteration and it's no longer accurate right um okay so we're always kind of like uh, so part of the work that would be good work that takes, as I mentioned to you, distributed the concept of distributed market substitution. We're saying simply because we collaborate, we're going to make a product that's better than anything else. I believe that's inevitable. Now, nobody has shown that yet in reality. So this is this history making in terms of uh, open source collaboration. But part of that involves getting that mat the the full full documentation for marlin which it does have a decent website but once it comes to any like serious configure reconfiguration good luck you know you then you have to know c and you have to go on the forums and all this yeah. stuff so it's not as good as it could be uh, as as is for a lot of projects because um I mean, in some way, the 3D printing has failed. I mean, it succeeded in many ways, but in some ways it failed because once people got into business, you know, forget the rest of the community, kind of. They, you know, they might contribute a little bit, but they never really... They typically, what happens is that they fork and just start making money, you know, and they don't, they don't really contribute to the community too much at that point. Like, like for example, Prusa, I mean, they wrote their own firmware. They ended up writing their own, you know. It's still open source, but it's not. Um, it's specialized for their printer. 
Whoa. And it's not, I don't think it's, is there software open source? I think it's still open source, but it's not well documented. So it's effectively not usable, you know, it's not, Whoa. not well usable. So um, that's, that's the common thing. And um, so, so far there's no strong leader uh, in my view, there's really no strong leader in the open source 3D printer community, which continues to crank out con a concerted effort to open keep this stuff open source. Mm -hmm. uh, there's partial efforts like Cura. I mean, they're proprietary, but their software is open source. You know, mm -hmm. Lulzbot, they were a real good leader, but you, you know Lulzbot? Uh, I've heard the name. Heard of them. They were amazing, but they sold out in a distress sale recently to another company, which I don't think is going to carry the open ethic as far as the original owner. Um, and a lot of open source 3D printer companies went under. So I don't think there's good leadership altogether with it. Of course, with the MakerBot, you've heard of the MakerBot story, right? Yeah. Or no? Yeah, you've heard that one. But, but yeah, there is... Um, you know, the, the open source 3D printing is both a, a major success and a major failure, you know. So, uh, but we hope to pick up the slack because once once it's open source, it's immortal, right? Yeah. So, so we hope that with effort, like this is the framework for how, you know, I treat the, the distributed enterprise aspect. If there's enough people doing this and collaborating on it. We finally will get to the superior product that's more effective just on, on all counts because people are collaborating and that's not a company like like you know the classic example with Lulzabad as a commentary it's like wow they were such a good leader and then they they kind of kind of went under um, and it kind of stopped you know yeah. the the open source the this very strong open source leadership kind of stopped so uh, we want to continue the open source thread and make this better and it may take a few years, but I think I think it's definitely doable, and especially with the larger printers, the printer, the 3D printer filament recycling, uh, yeah. that's all needed to make this um, an irresistible product. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the framework. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of uh, my example yesterday when I asked uh, one of the local companies, um, you know, to get some filament. Right. And, and the guy was, uh, I was, um, was asking me what the make of the printer was and I was saying well it's open source and uh, uh, it uses three millimeter filament he said oh you can't get three millimeter filament here you have to get it from Jakarta and I said okay how about 1.75 millimeter and he said you want to put 1.75 uh, millimeter filament in your extruder and I said yes and he said, you can't do that. You have to change the whole, you know, the whole extruder. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, Which is not I, the case. I, yeah. But anyway, I, I, I'm actually thinking that um, they would be good people to collaborate with, you know. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. I could get my, if I could get my project off the ground and at least um, making enough, have enough money coming in to be sustainable, um, because my idea is that um, not just Indonesia, but to spread to Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and all yeah. you know the um, Southeast Asian area. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. And uh, and I think to do that, um, it would be good to have uh, to collaborate with other, you know, like the the, the guys um, who are actually making. Uh, or assemble. I don't know. I don't know where they get their designs from, but um, I suppose it's proprietary. But um, yeah, it would be good to collaborate with them. Yeah, yeah, and and definitely, like if we can pick up more people who are truly open. But you'll find a lot of the greed coming in, and a lot of people won't understand the the open source thing. I think the open source will become inevitably uh, more powerful pretty soon, but it's it's very new for a lot of people. So. There's definitely going to be challenges for people who want who will want to collaborate openly. Oh, yeah. So there's okay. definitely a cultural barrier there. Okay. I mean, you'll you'll run into that. You'll be like, okay, um, 
you know, they'll be all talking open source and then all of a sudden they you'll see that they're not sharing any any technical designs, right? Yeah. It's going to happen. It's, okay. uh, you just have to be pretty certain of it because a lot of people also, you know, the, the, the definition of open source is not, pe people don't really understand what it means. Like, it's not clear to people. They don't understand that economic freedom is part of open source. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I mean, a lot of people just abuse abuse that word. So you, you can't really listen to what people uh, say. You have to observe whether they're actually publishing. I mean, the classical one is like, uh, which like I don't like is like, yeah, oh yeah, well, it will be open source when, you know, like that kind of deal, which is a lot of people say that. <laughs> and they're not really, uh, the, the important point about that is that you want to collaborate in order to get farther together mm -hmm. under the belief that you simply believe that collaboration is superior. And you'll see pretty quickly that most people will not believe that. So, okay. so but if we do find good collaborators, that would be awesome. And cool. I do believe that in due time, this will uh, succeed and we'll, we'll definitely put significant effort into trying to make this succeed um, now now our strategy has turned to the housing as the main product that can then uh, provide the cash flow to develop a lot of other things because the housing is is very powerful that's a very basic need okay um, yeah but, um, the housing are we talking about using the CB press uh, initially, no. The initial model does not use CEB, but it, but the later models, like hopefully next year, we will get back to the CEB mm -hmm. because it's much harder. We still need to do the um, a soil mixer machine in order to al allow you to mix the concrete, uh, the cement in there for stabilized block mm -hmm. so we can make stabilized block rapidly. Um, right now, you can press very well with unstabilized soil, but that's that's limited because if you've got rain, the, the blocks will yeah. melt away. Yeah. Uh, so you want to stabilize it. And we built our structures, several structures here, like the first workshop, second workshop, the house, another couple of houses. We built with CB, but we do understand that it's not it's not not as easy. But we will make it. Um, it takes more capital to make it free. <laughs> if you know what I mean, it's right. capital intensive. But once you have that capital, the machines to do it, yeah, you can build for relatively low cost if you can have the if you can provide the labor because it's still you've got some labor in there. Okay. Yeah, because um, for me, what I'm actually thinking is that the 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 3D printery is like the starting point for me but then i would like to expand into other um machines like uh, the cb press actually before i i came across oac i i actually bought two um compressed earth block making machines from china uh this was when was this around i think 2011 i think 20 yeah, around 2011 when I bought those. That was just before I actually came across uh, OAC and saw your... Um, uh, were your... they... Did you ever use them? No, actually, yeah, because soon after uh, 20, um, 2013, actually end of 2012, uh, that's when I got a new job and left Botswana. <laughs> so the machine... Oh, so you had those machines in Botswana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. many block per minute? Uh, I, I, I Were don't they know. automated? Automated no, or no? They weren't. They weren't. You had to fill the hopper yeah. manually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I what, what, about... I liked, what I liked about them was the was the fact that the blocks were actually shaped, so they yeah. fit. Uh, so they were like uh, interlocking blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah but i never actually got to yeah really. yeah i uh i started with a manual machine here that i borrowed from somebody i pressed a couple of blocks and gave up after that <laughs> okay too much too much work yeah. 
<laughs> it is hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I wanted to ask about, uh, uh, I think there was something you mentioned about um, being able to sell back the, yeah. the, the product to OSE. Is that possible? Yeah. Is that still yeah. Um, I mean, we have to address shipping, but I mean, yeah, I mean, people ask us for parts all the time, so we can, we can work out hmm. something where you, yeah. I mean, if we, if we can address the shipping, like how much will it be or cause we, I mean, we make and sell these machines, right? So yeah. we'd, we'd like to encourage you if you want to, if you want to sell us parts, we'll buy them pretty much at our, at production cost, like what it costs us to okay. produce it. Okay. No, what I was actually thinking was, um, it would, it, I think it would probably go a long way within my business plan if I can say that I have an, a ready market, you know, in the U.S. for products from for the machine. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that, uh, that that uh, I think would help, uh, you know, getting funding, getting funding from. You're you're talking about parts for more printers. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Well, right now, I mean, we haven't. See, we ne never focused on uh, marketing this in a major way. Mm. So we're, I mean, I'm just selling like a couple couple a month or whatever. It's, I, I'm not pushing that as, as anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we've sold like 20 or 30 or so um, of the machines. But um, next year, like when we do the house, part of that will part of the effort will go to the high temperature version of the printer where we are looking at selling quite a few of those like hundreds. Okay. So, I mean, but right now the plans are not firm on that. So I cannot give you specific commitments, but, um, by let's see, like in about, so we're finishing it up the build of this house by the end of this month. Okay. And probably like within a couple of months from then, we will have like specific dates and more more about that but right now it's like we're we're, we're just focusing on this house right now okay do you have uh, are there any videos on on the house uh, on the progress um i have a i'm taking a lot of video not haven't published anything yet it's, it's we just did the foundation the other day uh, and we're going to be building the wall panels but uh, I will produce like very extensive, detailed thing. Cause I mean, we're really saying this is like the most complete, easiest house you can build on a planet. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will do extensive video. And I mean, our goal is are very ambitious. Like we're, we're talking about hundreds of these for next year, like hundreds of customers. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to do a major campaign on this. This is, I mean, this is like getting serious. It's kind of like, um, this is it. It's getting to prime time. Okay. So, I mean, we've done a lot of work on the, on the housing and the CBs and that's definitely, I mean, still dear to me. I mean, I want to get those CBs going and, and build from the earth. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and at this time it's, it's just the more simple using off the shelf materials, lumber. That's pretty much off the shelf to do that for now, but yeah but building upon all the all the work we've done on modular construction where you can build as large swarms of swarms of people out of these modules that are the four by eight modules mm -hmm. so that's still a big idea okay uh then the other thing i wanted to ask about was the mentorship program yep yeah because um i'm actually uh I'm trying to sell my, I've got a piece of land in, in Botswana, which I've been trying to sell for the last two years. And uh, with uh, always, you know, always the deals falling through at the last minute. But anyway, how, I, many I have, acres, how many acres you got there? Uh, hectares, I can tell you. Acres. Yeah, how many? Hectares, it's uh, 6.5 uh, 6 hectares. Yeah. Hectares, yep. yeah. And that's where I wanted to set up the CV plant, CV press, you know, plant there. But that didn't work out. 
Anyway, so I've been trying to sell this. So this lady, this is there's been this lady who a uh, former colleague of mine um, when we were still at Air Botswana. So she's been interested in it, and um, she's retiring or retired in October and just gone back to Botswana. So yesterday she said she wanted to pay the deposit, which is like half up front, and then the other half after we do the title title deed transfer. So what, what I was thinking was I, I wanted to 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 pay deposit if she does actually pay the deposit. Um, uh, I'd like to pay like um, is it half uh, five thousand US for to join the mentorship program? Oh yeah. Yeah, and then um, the other half after we finalize the sale of the the land. Probably be sometime in January. I'm open to that now. So, how much have you read about the mentorship program? Um, I read. I read on the wiki. I I did read. Um, yep. The, so the idea it. is, yeah. I mean, I'm very much open to it. My vision is still completely about. Uh, you know, I've been at this for a decade or or so, and. Uh, I understand clearly that this is not about myself, but about getting a team of people that will make this happen, right? And the idea here is right now we've got material enough for so much entrepreneurial activity. I'm really glad you're taking on a printer and I, I hope hope it succeeds. But I've noticed that one thing is when I did the, for example, when I did the brick press back yeah. in, this was now 2008, like 2009 or 10, I published a blog post uh, about it and it's like oh yeah hundreds of people are gonna just take this and build it and start businesses all over the world and what did I find out zero that has happened right yeah. so what I'm finding is that the the barriers to learning are significant right yeah. and we do have a lot of experience and and so many businesses that are ripe for production but the but the idea is that this needs to be transferred on and the idea of the, the mentorship is that I will spend the time with you. So basically we meet every week and we design a, a course that's specifically mentored uh, for your interest, whether it's the uh, around business startup around 3D printer or the CEB press or tractors. So for example, we will be doing the next iteration as we do the house, we'll be building the next iteration of the tractor because we've right now I'm using the one back from 2014 and, I, and I'm still using it during construction right now but we're going to do the next iteration so th there's all these ideas that we can turn into viable enterprises and, and the mentorship is intended to take people like yourself who are entrepreneurial who are willing to take the effort to learn I mean I've got I've got the information um, that needs to spread and um, I want to basically transfer it so that we're all building a powerful force of, of a lot of people collaborating in these enterprises and just one single very successful enterprise could change the world for many many people and so we're doing that like right now our main effort is the is the house but right yeah. with it is the tractor and 3d printer because those will both be used so that you can make that house construction business the most efficient and robust where the equipment costs are aren't killing you because your equipment breaks breaks down and then you have to pay all this money for it we're in control of all that all those all those risks so that's that's the goal of the mentorship program to get people in in the enterprise and it's essentially a, a weekly meeting mm -hmm. um we i pretty much work with you and then set you up for an assignment like it's it's as much hands-on as possible so you'd be doing either design work or uh, whatever work it takes to take something to so we we would want to select something that you really want to focus on and take that to completion if it's the brick press we've done in 2019 we've done uh an initial design of the soil mixer i don't know if you've seen that on the wiki mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah. You've, you've seen that we started that that's never been built um but the next step on that program is to make sure we develop that machine because as far as the brick press we're pretty set that the thing works uh, power cubes are robust um we're also doing i mean we always iterate so so we're doing the next iteration of the the power cube which is even more 
uh, flexible. So for example, for the tractor, uh, the current strategy for the tractor, the, the next tractor we're building is going to be 76 horsepower, but made of four power cubes. Okay. And the way it's designed is each power cube has got all the support in a mother power cube, but the actual power unit is cons consists of the engine plus the pump only. All the support infrastructure is in the mother power cube so that if you have a breakdown, you take this unit and it weighs only 130 pounds. So if you have a breakdown anytime in a field, you can snap in a new new power cube just like that. So you have 0% downtime, which is better than you can say for anything. Uh, so that that's the next that's the next iteration on the power cubes and the tractor. Um, and I think it will be useful for the, I mean, we've dealt with all the issues like breakdowns of equipment and all that. That's all we deal with here, right? And that's why we redesign stuff uh, to make it more resilient and robust. But that's the, that's the path you'd be engaged on. You're actually, I'll be sitting with you. We'll be actually collaborating directly on design. So as you're learning the free CAD and, and the design skills, primarily uh, machine design guides is what I'll be, I'll be teaching you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you actually get to contribute by taking those principles and reifying that into CAD that we will then prototype. And the idea there is that in the summers, we'll always like this summer we'll have the the like last year we were supposed to have the summer of extreme this this year we were supposed to have the summer of extreme design build, which was canceled. Mm -hmm. But every year we will have um, two or three months in the summer where part of the, the mentorship program is that you can participate in that. So you can, we can build out all the things that you've been designing and working on and, and prototype the business side and, and just the physical build side. So, yeah, so it's, it's a completely collaborative process. Um, right now, uh, I, I had a guy from South Africa who signed up. He didn't, he kind of quit. Uh, he, he was really busy with his job, so he had to, he couldn't, he, he never did the, any, he could not have time to actually do the work that's required, so he kind of dropped off. Uh, but I definitely want to, uh, I'm open to that, um, to the mentorship where my goal is, like, as we go forward with the house program, I'd like to get uh, a concerted campaign where we reach out, it's like, okay, let's find the best person in every country to do this, right? So, so basically, market this and and promote this, do a video, um, and get a, a bunch of publicity and marketing materials out there to actively recruit the people for the the mentorship program, because I know this is going to succeed when we find people like yourself that are all over the world and willing to collaborate. Because I'm convinced that we can change the world with that. So yeah. that's 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 the basic idea. Okay. Um I'm all for it. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if you are all for that, then I do want to ask you to to follow the uh, I don't know if you've seen the procedure on the, the application, the video of interest and and uh, then focused interviews to, to get you like, uh, okay, to talk about some other things related to the program and, and actually start talking about uh, what exactly would you like to accomplish. Uh, but there's a formal um, application process. So you can just, you've seen that probably. So it starts with a video of interest. So please do that. And, and it would also include an initial enterprise plan for what you're trying to do. Because when, once we can clarify those goals, then we can be very explicit about pursuing them. All right. Okay. Yep. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like right now, like with the house, it's um, it is a very exciting time because this is um, this cannot fail. I mean, the, the basic idea is in the United States, the revenue model is uh, sell the houses for about one thirty k, and our cost of production is about 80k so per house the net revenue would be about 50,000 but it's extremely lean and efficient and still a great for a thousand square feet uh that, that's the model thousand square feet for one hundred thirty thousand dollars for the u.s market here 
Uh, so that's the kind of package we're preparing with the current model that we have. Okay. Yep. Um, A hundred and thirty thousand. That's about how much? For about a hundred square meters. A hundred, a hundred or a thousand square meters. Thousand. It's a hundred uh, thousand feet square feet. About a hundred square meters. Oh, a hundred square, uh, square meters. Let's see, thousand yep. square meters, 90, 93 square meters. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I like I said um, when I first uh, started out, I was I was quite interested in building with using um, st stabilized earth blocks. Yeah. So I would still like to be able to do that. Um, uh, Absolutely here in Indonesia as well, yeah. It's, um, but, so that would be one of the, I would uh, like, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a business unit, you know, you know dealing with um, building, uh, building housing using uh, stabilized earth blocks. And using Absolutely, I mean, the, Okay, let me share you. Have you seen any documentation from the build that we did in Belize? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Uh, Take a look at, uh, click on that link that I just sent you, but uh, the, we have pretty good news. So that that's a very small house we built there, but th we've demonstrated that you can lay those bricks extremely fast. We When we set up a full, uh, like a working work chain of people, we laid like like 10 block per minute like mm -hmm. every five seconds or so it's more than 10 block we were basically one person was passing it to the next person and basically like bam bam right into the wall against wooden forms so in belize we've demonstrated that the production that the actual laying is doable so our vision is that we can take like 50 or 100 people and build a complete house in a single day like crazy efficiency so the cool. swarming business swarming model of production we're designing our workflows for that or you can use it just you know with a few people standard construction methods but we're designing everything so it's swar swarmable in parallel because we envision things like you know take a church group take a bunch of people like in a disaster zone and just get them all building their next civilization you know that, that cool. kind of thing yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a very simple, that was a very simple structure there, but that was the next milestone. So, and, and we were hoping to have the the brick, uh, the Sol mixer there, but we didn't because we just ran out of time because yeah. everything just moved slowly down there. <laughs> um, um. The, the the bricks are they laid dry or is there like mortar between uh the... we used a, a slurry slurry okay of a watered down slurry of of some cement and the soil okay. so it's a thin down slurry and then you just lay them on that okay now we used uh what's called a basket technique which means that we had mesh, it was actually chicken wire, on one and the other side of the wall, so they're earthquake stabilized. It's a way to st stabilize for earthquakes. So the, the mesh wraps around the top plate and the bottom plate. It doesn't have rebar inside, it has mesh on the outside. So that's what we did, and through ties with metal. So we did that in Belize. Um, okay. Yeah. So we know how to stabilize it for earthquakes. We know how to press the block. We know how to lay the block. Right now, the last thing is to get the salt mixer so that we can produce the block at, I, I think the, the prediction, the cost is gonna be like 20 cents. I did 
forget the budgets, but it was about 20 cents for stabilized, 20 cents per block for stabilized block. Um, just outside my house is like a building and they use these tiny bricks, tiny um, red brick, uh, I think the, the yeah. baked, baked uh, yeah. bricks. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can just give you a quick yeah. glimpse of, yeah. of, of what it looks like. Uh, Oh, Sweet Indonesia, where you don't have snow. Yeah. Are you, are you able to, to see? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some construction under some... Yeah. Hold up. My, uh... Yeah, so they're doing lit bricklaying. Sorry, my, my mic microphone pulled out. <laughs> Jose, are you are you able to see? I am. I can see them walking on the roof and yeah, and, yeah, and they're using all these, these tiny little bricks, tiny blocks to lay a wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it just seems so inefficient. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think my thought about that is yeah. It, <laughs> well, the the thing that's inefficient about it is that you need to use mortar. The mortar takes a lot of time yeah you've got a lot of mortar in those walls yes there for, is yeah. um the slurry like we use that's it's pretty easy to mix that pretty fast we had a big barrel that we were mixing with the back of on the back of a tractor um but we we perfected that we we got the slurry down we got the blank because because for laying bricks the the limit is not how fast you can take the blocks it's how quickly you can butter the walls up with the slurry so we got that down um and as i said our next step is to get the super efficient production of blocks so basically one person on a tractor operating this uh, soil mixer throwing so into the soil mixer can produce the block and another person now stacks the blocks on pallet for pallets for later use that'll be the kind of workflow okay uh, oroville you know oroville institute or uh, nope no i haven't heard of they're the guys in india that are the experts on compressed earth block but or orville um, is orville or o-r-v-i-l-l-e orville yeah okay i'll, I'll look uh, it up after. Okay. but their their path i think i don't know i think we can be i just put a link in there i think we can be more like in terms of the, the production process be much more effective than they are uh they use uh and their equipment is also much more costly than ours mm. um yeah but those are guys are really good they know how to build arches complete that's that's not entry level that's skilled work okay yeah those guys are i think they're the best in the world on on the in the topic oh, okay but they're not scaling they're not i mean they're not replicating their work it's i mean i think the way you can make that work scale is if you have access to affordable equipment they have proprietary equipment and it's expensive hmm. yeah I mean, they designed yeah. it, but it's not open source, and it's expensive. Yeah, there, there was um, before I went to China to for my block machines. I there was a there is a company in South Africa um, which produces a CEB press block uh, machine, but it was so expensive, I uh, couldn't afford it. That's why I went to China instead, where they yeah. made a copy. Uh, yeah, a copy is sort of yeah similar co a copy in the, the, the same machine yeah mm. yeah i haven't seen anything as as a cost effective as our machine uh, mm. we're i mean as far as i know we're like three to five times cheaper than anybody else on the market more like oh, three yeah. to ten. Okay. the the uh, the south african one was called hydroform Hydrofoam, 
dann ja. Ja, wo ist Hydro? Perform block machines. I don't know if they're still around. Yeah, I see Hydroform, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this should be that zero dot zero day. Yeah, I mean, if. Mm, they want to collaborate. We can. But I'm not seeing any compressed earth. They're making cement blocks. It was the selling point actually, uh, making earth compressed earth blocks. Hydroform.com. Maybe 